the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show with Billy the Kid and Scott Tang. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. It's, it's the, the Bill and Scott, Scott Cubicle Show. Show. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the Bill and Scott Cubicle, Cubicle Show. Show. Yeah! What's going on? I'm Scott. And I'm Bill. And this is the, the Bill and Scott Cubicle, Cubicle Show. Show. Epi number 113. Ugh. And listen, we're like two minutes late, so I apologize for being a little late today. Um, You know, better late than never, but never late is better. Ooh, um, bars. But we got caught up in some... Throwback Thursday nostalgia. We were watching yeah. some of Scott's old YouTube videos, which we're going to showcase next week because we didn't have time to get them downloaded. Put into, yeah, like everything. put into the stream system this week. But oh, next Thursday, oh, they're solid gold. Listen, I've been hitting <clears throat> the target demo for over ten years, and there's <laughs> proof in the videos. The target which, demo being Scott. Yeah, just me. <laughs> as long as I laugh, that's what matters. We got a lot coming up. We're going to talk about the Black Panther soundtrack because the uh, movie's getting great reviews right now. Left Shark talk. Um, if you think Janet Jackson will be joining Justin Timberlake on stage. Uh, some funny stuff with the Migos. Albums that you can expect to drop tomorrow. But I guess we could get right into kind of where we left off yesterday with this whole poll situation. Oh so there's this ongoing debate right now on if a straw has one or two holes. Um, this is a tight one. People are going over, crazy but... over this. Uh, but according to you, the people, even though I highly disagree with you, 56% of people. So it is kind of qu- close. 56% of people say that a straw has two holes, even though it's really one continuous hole with it's two not, entry points. No, but... it's one. And think about it this way. This turned into a humongous debate in this group chat I have with my brothers and sisters and friends. And my brother made probably the best point I've heard. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. It was me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. How many holes does a tunnel have? One. No. A tunnel has two holes, an entry point and an exit point. Well, I think the whole and thing is. And what is a straw but a tunnel for liquids? Yeah. No. My brother made the point about um, a cave. A cave has one hole. Because it has a hole in the wall in the front, and then it closes off at the back. And if you put a hole at the end of a straw, you basically have a really long, But no one's saying that a hole cave. doesn't have an exit point. No, I'm saying if you put or if you block off one end of a straw, yes. you've basically got a cave. It has one hole. But you've blocked – because you've blocked off the second hole, which by definition means it has to have two holes if one of them can be blocked to make so a cave. So if I dug – and I dug right straight through the earth, right? Mm-hmm. That would be one hole. It would be – a hole through the earth, a tunnel through the earth with two holes, one on either end. No, they're two called entry points. It's two holes with one tunnel in the middle. No, two openings. And that's one hole what a straw with two is. openings. And that's what it is. What did the people say, Scott? Uh, the people are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then okay. we have this other poll going on that you still got time to vote in right now. There's uh, – I'm – I wanted to keep the poll going until Sunday, but of course I didn't like check anything before I tweeted it out and only got the 24 hour run. So there's only about seven and a half hours left in this. So link on up to at jams nine, six, three, and let us know if you think Janet Jackson will show up, uh, at the Super Bowl halftime show this year. As of right now, 57% of people think that she will not show up. That's surprising to me. Why? Okay. Even if it's just wishful thinking. Why wouldn't you think she would show up? Do you think they would really miss this opportunity to capitalize on all that press from four, uh, what, 14 years ago and, and maybe turn it into a positive? I think that would be a huge wasted opportunity if they didn't bring her on stage. And I know she said that she would do it if Justin Timberlake asked her to. I think it's all ploy to be surprised when she actually yeah. does come out on stage. Like, oh, my God. Did you hear about how the – Parents Television Council wrote a letter to Justin Timberlake, a nice open letter to him. Um, Asking him not to rip any girls' clothes off yeah. on stage this year? So the Parents Television Council has written a open letter to Justin Timberlake. Hi, Allie. Begging him. Begging? <laughs> to keep his Super Bowl performance appropriate. Okay. Okay, let's let's not forget. It's not like Justin Timberlake runs around ripping people's clothes off all the time, or even at his live shows, or even at every Super Bowl That's... he's been at. Because remember, in two thousand one, he was performing with NSYNC, and he didn't pull anybody's clothes off there. So he's fifty fifty on on keeping the nudity out of the Super Bowl. Well, that's really the only controversial thing 
that is even around Justin Timberlake. Yeah, right? right. Exactly. Like, what else has he done other than date Britney Spears, for instance, that people that has been like newsworthy? Nothing. Right. And I think that was Joey Fatone's point about he, he said that he didn't think Janet would show up because Justin is not controversial. He doesn't want to spark that uh, flame of flame of it hate. Up. I guess uh, I'm going to kind of go through this. I wish I had more time to read this, but like we said in the beginning, we got caught up in some old videos, mm -hmm. and I did want to go through and uh, read or highlight some of the standouts from this nice open letter that is one, you... two, three, four, five, six, seven, six and a half. I don't know if the seventh paragraph would be their little thank you. So like six paragraphs <laughs> here of why they are asking him to keep it appropriate. Um yeah, but you could go and look that up yourself. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a lot. It. Um, I, that's why I wanted to get some highlights. For the children, probably, right? It's because it's parents' council mm -hmm. for the future of America. For the, for the children. Uh, so like we said, go to at jams963.com and place your vote if you think Janet Jackson will be at the Super Bowl halftime show this year. What are you thinking? I, I think I, yes, I and I really too. hope so. And I think we should transition from that into... Another halftime uh, performance yeah. that was kind of produced an iconic moment. Yeah. Not quite as iconic. Well, I don't know. Maybe iconic for better reasons. Left Shark. Remember Left Shark from three years ago? Actually, the performance was three years ago to the day, wow. February 1st, 2015, when Katy Perry took the stage. And Left Shark was back there like, I don't know what's going on. Well, the guy inside the Left Shark suit has finally spoken up about why exactly he looked like such an idiot. And the reason behind it is that he said he screwed up the choreography on purpose because he was playing a different character. He said that they have certain types of choreography that's set, and then they have what they call freestyle choreography where you're allowed to express yourself yeah. as a dancer, and that that's what he was doing, as though being a guy in a shark suit behind Katy Perry is some kind of major artistic showcase, and he was just using his creative license. I thought you were about to be like, put him No, uh, I'm just like, him, uh... like, for the art, for the artwork, he was doing it because he's an artist, and not because he didn't know what he was supposed to be doing. Come on. Do you really think that we're supposed to buy this? The cleanup job is horrible here. Like, <laughs> it's three years too late. Did it, come, did it take him three years to come up with this excuse? Well, I bet you that it's that time of the year, and people are... They're talking about the Super Bowl, and they're getting all hyped about it, so they're reaching out to people that have done things in the mm. Super Bowl before. So I bet you some, like, radio host or yeah, it was podcast NPR. or whatever he, was they like, did an interview with him. They're like, oh, what can we do Ooh, to, like... Let's get Left Shark. That'd be topical. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be good interview. <laughs> Left Shark joins the NPR. I mean, they're not wrong. I talked about it on the air today because oh, that's a weird thing to say. But uh, that's why I think that they, yeah, you know, they gave sense. him the platform. I don't think anybody really would have cared if he tweeted about it. Because you know? nobody would have known who he was. Yeah, exactly. Like, who are you? Oh, unless Left Shark. You're, oh, unless your at handles at Left Shark. He inspired countless Halloween costumes yeah. and a bunch of and a bunch of memes. <laughs> the memes were good. I do live for the memes. Yeah, for him. Um, speaking of tweets, real quick, I just want to just touch on this real quick. Tweets on the and Pete's? Jam seventy six point three Instagram. There's this Pete. Twitter account that is uh, only there to wish Pitbull a happy birthday. Oh, really? It's called Pitbull birthday and <laughs> they wished him a happy belated birthday this year oh jeez! so the one Come job on. they had they missed it sharks can't do their jobs pit bulls can't do their jobs but how about panthers specifically black panther the soundtrack kendrick Ooh. lamar oh look at that flawless wow. segue that was better that was a right shark segue okay so um black panther or yeah kendrick because lamar. that was the right type of segue yeah Kendrick Lamar put out that new song, All the Stars, and I was like, okay, obviously this isn't from Damn because it's not a one-word title. Um, but I haven't heard anything about a new Kendrick album, so what is this from? Mm, sure Turns out me. it's from the Black Panther soundtrack, which Kendrick Lamar, I believe the word you used was curated. Yes. He's, he didn't do the entire soundtrack himself, but he produced it. He He's on five of the 14 tracks. Um, and that's going to also feature artists like The Weeknd, Khalid, Future, Travis Scott, Schoolboy Q, 2 Chain, Sway Lee, and a whole bunch more. Um, that'll be out a week from tomorrow. Okay. And then Black Panther the movie is going to be out the following week, so the 16th. And Black Panther is apparently going to be God's gift to superhero movies if everyone who went to the premiere is to be believed. I have not heard a single bad thing about it. Um, Bless. Per personally, I 
didn't think it looked very interesting from the one theatrical trailer because all it was was Black Panther jumping back and forth from a bunch of cars. But I have to assume there's more to the movie than that. The, so this, his story is pretty cool. I mean, depending how they do it, it's really gonna. People are saying that it's better than Thor Ragnarok, That's which I obvious. sort of take issue with because Thor Ragnarok wasn't good. Yeah, but um, yeah, that might be the worst superhero than... movie of all time. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like up there. in the basement. I don't know. Iron Man two was pretty bad. Yeah. But it's down there. I think it's bottom five. Marvel has produced, like, really, really bad superhero movies. Like, the worst superhero movies. You're anti-Marvel movies. No, I am not. No. Well, because you say they don't follow the comics enough. I know I know how you... But what I'm saying is I know how you feel about this. And I know that you're upset that Marvel paid off critics to give DC bad reviews. Which I'm also upset about. I also want to say another thing here. I will not go see a Marvel movie opening weekend. Ever, no matter how bad I want to see it. I want to see Black Panther so bad, but I'm not going to see it the first weekend because I don't like you, Marvel. You don't want to boost their numbers? Nope, because well, I don't want to give them that extra 10 bucks to, you know, because maybe my 15 bucks or whatever at the movie would be the tipping point to give them 100 <laughs> mil in a weekend, and I don't want to be that person. All it takes is one. All it takes is one. But speaking of one and two and boosting sales numbers... What about it? Culture, two... The new Migos album. Good. Yeah. You're on fire right now. I need to stand back. It's too hot. All right. So Migos. Oh, yeah. Woo. Burning up. They put out their album Culture 2, the sequel to Culture, uh, last Friday. And it's on track to be number one. The, the, the numbers might be out for this week yet, or do they I come out on they Friday? I think they come out. Um, I think it'll Later be today? one day they officially come out. Okay. Um, so it's on track to be number one this week. It's estimated to be about 180,000 to 200,000 copies sold. But most of that is due to album equivalent streams mm -hmm. because this album is 24 tracks and 105 minutes long. That is an hour and 45 minutes wow. for this album. And fans... Even like diehard fans of the group kind of take issue with how long it was. And now we, we pulled some of these tweets um, from <laughs> John. I'm just listening. Oh, okay. All right. I thought he was going to come over and yell at us for talking about music. Um, some of these tweets, like this one that says, if you play Culture 2 by Migos right now, it will finish. <laughs> it's so small. It will finish right as the clock strikes midnight on January 1st, 2019. Start off your new year right. So like that meme that was that was going around earlier this year where you play X song, you start it at this time and it'll hit a certain line right at midnight. These people are saying that if you start Culture 2 now, it'll finish New Year's 2019. That's how long it is. Um the second one is a list of all the things that you can uh all the things that you can do that Culture 2 is longer than. So, like, for instance, you could fly from London to Paris, and you wouldn't have time to listen to the entire album. And that is that is literally, that's not an exaggeration. Uh, the album is an hour and 45 minutes. I looked it up. A flight from London to Paris direct is an hour and 15 minutes. So you still have half an hour of Migos left to go at the end of uh at the you, end of that flight. You could do that while you're waiting for baggage claim. This is my favorite one here. <laughs> it took me... Bring, bring it up a little bit. Oh, no. I will never finish Culture 2 because there's 24 songs and each one is like an hour long. And then this next one, hour and a half into Culture 2 and in sight. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. And yeah. finally, if you think that's bad, Mike Will Made It said that Ray Shremmerd's new album, Shrem Life 3 is going to be a triple album. So this apparently is the trend. Uh, Heartbreak on a Full Moon, the Chris Brown album that had 45 tracks, that was a double album. So think think about how long a triple album is. It's just to manipulate be. the streaming that's, numbers. That's, that's all, all it, is. it is. And they're not even like they're not even trying to hide that fact. They're like Chris Brown was open about it. it was like stream every song, replace the copies of the, like other people's albums Man. with my CD in stores. But remember when he said if you're going to buy the album, like if you're going to buy multiple copies, buy them on separate transactions because each transaction counts as one album. <sighs> at least, I will say, at least Chris Brown is very open about it. He broke it down for you. He was letting you know yeah. what he was up to. So, he wasn't sugarcoating it. It's like the days of having an album with like four or five radio singles and then like seven or eight filler tracks are over. Nowadays, you get four or five radio singles and 19 or 20 filler tracks. I still think the best albums are 10 to 13 songs. I I think like twelve is probably the sweet spot for me. That falls right so, in yeah, there. Right, so, yeah, falls right in there. Yep. You know, depending... maybe like forty eight minutes to an hour. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, me too. Right Dude, in that we're on ballpark. the same page. Wow. 
Usually we're not with music. All right, so let's get into some albums that drop tomorrow. All right. I haven't had a chance to look at this because we were late. So I'm just going to scan. There really is only one album that's Yeah, that's right. We did look at this last week. I'll let you take that one. So the album that drops tomorrow is the guy that will be performing at the Super Bowl this weekend. Justin Timberlake's Man of the Woods. Do you know where that album title came from? I have no idea, frankly, Mike. I uh, don't give a well, damn. Well, frankly, well, I don't give a damn. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That's, that's the that's, saying. That's, that's how you sell it. I was it. like, what is the saying again? But, <laughs> um, it's the uh, Latin translation of his son Silas's name. Silas in Latin means man of the woods. It's because I heard that announcement, like the title, I was like, it sounds like an album of country song, like a lumberjack song. He's going to go out into the woods and swing an axe and, you know, make an old spice and all that stuff. But um, no, I guess it's just... Because then I heard Filthy, I was like, this does not sound like what I would think of Man of the Woods uh, album. Anyway, another upcoming album that we've got for the 2nd of February. I want to bring this one up because they had a single a couple years ago. AWOL Nation. Remember that song? Sale? No. Probably, yeah. Well, we we played it on Fly, and it was super obnoxious. It would be like, do 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 Sale! Sale! Oh, I didn't know that's how it really was. Sale! What? <laughs> that's um, Ali's answer. Good that's, sauce. You guys need more coffee. That's that is um. Was that number one on the top ten? That's a generous assessment. It, it wasn't. Was? I wanna, I'm gonna say it's not a bad song. I, I there were points where I enjoyed it because I like to go. Sail! But you know that's you know. Is that really? There were other layer? words. There okay. were other, no, that that actually happened. Like I have to play the song for you. I, I this. have no idea. But there were other words. But that was the prime. I was like the hook. Yeah, clearly. Sail! <laughs> okay, so with that, so they got a new album coming out tomorrow. If you want more of that, yeah, that's pretty. Here much come it. the runs is the name of it. By the yeah. way, if you're looking for it. All right. Also, uh, you got um, nobody. So with that being <laughs> yeah, said, there's not really anybody else that you may have ever heard of coming out tomorrow. Cubicle show Monday through Thursday, 10:30 Eastern time. Because that's the only time zone that matters. Enjoy yourself this weekend. Have fun. Be safe as you watch the uh, the Super Bowl. Don't get yourself hurt. Okay, Don't do nothing stupid. Woo. Uber yourself home and be smart. Because frankly, my dear, I do give a damn about you. Oh, wow. That was sweet. <clears throat> nice job. Found it up. All right. So we'll see you on Monday. Enjoy. Bye. One. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. What I'm talking about, boy. Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. Cubicle Show. <laughs> <laughs> we just got one. Boy.